Welcome to the Walk Talks podcast, a resource produced by Southland Christian Ministries located in Ringgold, Louisiana. Our purpose is to provide you with daily devotions so that you can faithfully grow in your relationship with Christ each and every day. We hope these truths will be an encouragement to you as you hear from God's Word today. Thanks for joining me today. This is Mike Herbster, and this is your the Walk Talks podcast. And today we want to talk about the life of a great man in the Bible by the name of Daniel. And I want to go to Daniel chapter 1 where we understand a little bit about who Daniel was. I think it's important for us to understand that Daniel represents what we can be in the time and culture in which we live. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are saying that as Christians we shouldn't really invest ourselves into our the, uh, the affairs of our government, our local vicinity, that we should just live our lives as Christians and let whatever happens happen. And I think when you study a lot of what the Scriptures teaches, and in, in particular what we're seeing with the life of Daniel, is that as a man of God, he was definitely affecting the wicked government in which he was living. And he was doing everything he could to stand for what was right to speak wisdom into the ears of the wicked kings and to do what he was supposed to do to affect the culture that was um, around him. And so instead, instead, what we see a lot of in our society today is that the culture is more affecting the Christian than the Christian, the culture. Can I just challenge you today, as you think about the life of Daniel, that Daniel was a courageous young man, along with some of his buddies Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who evidenced an effective way of confronting their culture and their wicked government and doing it by both their testimony, their spoken word, and their lifestyle choices. So I think it's important that we take a stand against the wickedness of our day and the wickedness of our government and the wickedness of our culture, that we stand up against the fault in indoctrination that's taking place all around us, and that we rise with courage and have... Daniel's faith. So in Daniel chapter 1, we find out a few things about Daniel. It's most likely assumed that because of Daniel's um, wisdom, his, um, his education prowess, probably because of his stature and even good looks, that he was handpicked by um, King Nebuchadnezzar along with some of the other uh, Jewish boys. Many have, um, have said that maybe Daniel and the boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and some of the others that were snatched from Israel in the captivity, most likely saw their own family members' lives being taken right before their very eyes. And they're brought into this Babylonian culture, this what we, what we know to be a very wicked culture, a very prosperous financial culture, a very party lifestyle type culture. And these guys were brought into that with the goal of being trained to be a part of the Babylonian government. And it says in verse 3, And the king spake unto Asphanes, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. Children, listen to this, in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now, there was a lot said about these young men, and Daniel being one of them. Now, the, at the heart of the people of God is not necessarily their good looks and their cunning skill. But can I just say that there's something to be said about young people and Christians who are working diligently at how they look and the skills of their life and having wisdom to do right things. They're having cunning knowledge that they're, they're seeking to do well in their academics. I want to challenge you to be the type of individual that, that even people of the world would choose to work for them because of your, just your work ethic, your diligence, your discipline. Now, that is not the priority, but I will say that that is a mark of a man or a woman of God, is that you care about every part of your being you, you want to do the best you can possibly do in your education. You want to be the most skilled at whatever, whatever you work at. You, you do things with excellence. 
And what we find with Daniel is that he was a, a young man that was already at that point. He was chosen because of that. And he was young. So if, I'm, if, if, if there's some young people listening right now, don't ever just say to yourself, oh, I'll wait till I'm older to, to work hard. No, work now. Every day matters. And repetition aids in your learning. Get up every day with an earnestness about doing things well and doing, giving, giving good effort to all, that, that, all the responsibilities in your life. But what I want to focus on is what verse 8 says about Daniel because I think this is crucial for the day we live in, in the wicked Babylonian type culture that we live in with, with, with the lying of our government and the false indoctrination and the, the insanity of, 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 of the things going on the immorality that's all around us, that we need to be like Daniel in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And you know the story, and it represents the worldliness that was um, accepted in Babylon. It was being pushed upon these, these young men of God, and so can we say that he purposed in his heart to stand firm against worldliness, to stand firm against the Babylonian culture, that there was this, this energy, this uh, inertia inside of him that said, it doesn't matter what happens to me, I'm not going to fall prey to the culture around me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand and affect the culture, not let the culture affect me. And he actually posed a, a competition, which I think this would be interesting to do today, in relationship to what we see in our culture. And if we would just set up a person like Daniel in our world today and say, a person who loves the Lord, a person who walks with God, a person who's wanting to stay away from alcohol, wanting to stay away from immorality, wanting to be obedient to their parents, wanting... let's compare a person like that compared to a person who engages in all of the stuff of the culture. That's kind of what happened here. And obviously you know that, that Daniel's way, which was God's way, one. And can I say that God's way will always win? This is such a great challenge for us. Now, the particulars of this, as far as what he was eating and drinking, isn't necessarily the greatest application there, although what we do eat and what we do drink does matter, because whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. We know the Bible teaches that. But the greater principle here is that David found himself, not David, sorry, Daniel found himself in a place where the world was all around him and he was being pushed and encouraged to be a part of the world. And he didn't just go along to get along. He didn't just ride the fence and do what was easy. He was willing to stand up and purpose in his heart to do the right thing. Um, there was two other times this, uh, ha or, or several other times with Daniel, but let me just mention the other one where he, where he was told not to pray in this Babylonian culture and the, the wicked people who didn't want him to have prominence brought it to the king and said, King, oh king, make sure that everybody prays to you. And Daniel said, oh no, I'm going to purpose in my heart to pray to God just like I always do. And he didn't allow even the carnal corrupt law, legislation that came across to stop him from doing what's right. There is a point in time where it is better to obey God than it is to obey man. And that is when our government begins to actually tell us to do things that explicitly go against what God tells us to do. I hope you'd be the type of individual that would purpose in your heart to stand even if it meant going to the lion's den like Daniel had to go to. I'm telling you right now that this is a crucial time for Christians to gird up, to be courageous like Daniel, to be willing to face the foe with God on your side and to do the right thing no matter what the cost. So my challenge to you today is be a man like Daniel, purpose in your heart to do the right thing. Don't be defiled by the world, but let us do our part in affecting the world with a lifestyle and a, and a conduct that is pleasing to the Lord. Go be a Daniel today. I hope you have a great day, and thanks for listening to the podcast, Walk Talks. Thanks for listening to the Walk Talks podcast. We trust that what you've heard today has challenged your walk with God. 
It is our prayer that through this podcast, every listener would strive to become more like Christ and faithfully live for Him each and every day. Join us next time, and God bless.